Let's see. Let's see. Oh. We are recording. We are. We are. So hello, everyone. Welcome to the month of April. We are really rolling through the year of 2023. And you have entered in. So you think you want to be that. Um, this is Tiffany and Ashley, Miss Positivity. And we really like to shed light on the realities of the different careers and um, situations that go on in the economy, as well as um, literacy advancement and the lack of our um, literacy skills in our youth and in our, in our adults and in our families and our households in general. We have a passion for literature, uh, literally, <laughs> one book at a time. We are authors, uh, but this show is all about the reality of life the reality of the different things that we face and deal with and how we educate um, others to grow and to do better in those different areas, but but really shed in light the behind the scenes of um, those different career paths. And so today we are um, having uh, Mr. James Riley of Riley Enterprises LLC, and we are celebrating the month of literacy, I mean, uh, Financial Literacy Month. And uh, one, just for the run into April this fast, like, you know, going into financial literacy month, that's a big topic to talk about your preparedness and your your ability to stay fit in this economy. And so I'm excited to have that conversation with him. Um, I want to talk about the history first, the history of financial literacy month. Um, it's celebrated every April. So if you didn't know that, this is a great time as a household to really sit down and have some um, financial literacy uh, skills uh, conversations, maybe allow your youth to go to the grocery store with you or for you, or uh, take that time to make the list to um, give them the evaluation of the cost of things. Um, I know even in this 20th century, I know growing up in my, in my era as well, and then beyond me, um, these two season <laughs> individuals. I am the youngest, but but I know throughout the years and decades, as as time continues to evolve, uh, the value of the dollar. And that's every you know every um, currency constantly is changing, and so having that conversation and learning you know the different currencies, learning um, if you're not in this area, what different currencies may be equal to you know the dollar, and then what the dollar amount means to you because um you can't just say i want i want i want if you don't know what that value of that dollar is so this could be time that you can sit down and have that conversation and i know we all spend money on a day-to-day -day and we utilize our funding to pay for our homes or pay for our car notes or pay for going out to eat but do you actually sit down and have that discussion like this is how much money this household brings in and this is what we do with it because once that child becomes 18, I'm finding, especially a lot of our youth um, uh, graduating college and and they got to figure out what kind of budget they can have to even live and sustain their lifestyle. Not a lifestyle that they're vid visualizing that they want to have, but the lifestyle that they are going to be living in right now beyond the career, beyond actually getting into a place where they want to be. You know, what does that look like if you don't have support? And if you do have support, how much would I be willing to invest in you monthly, as well as how much effort you're going to put forth in your livelihood monthly? A lot of these youth are not getting that kind of conversation and kind of either getting thrown out there or running and jumping out there because they want to run away from home and not deal with that conversation, that hard conversation, which is a love conversation for most parents. I know most parents on this on this chat can, can say they did not want their kid to just leave their home not prepared. And, you know, it's like 18 and get out, but still you still want your child to be prepared because they are going to come back <laughs> or eventually have that conversation that you will have to um, assist them with if they do struggle or or have an issue out there. So how are you preparing them? And so um, Financial Literacy Month is celebrating the month of April. Uh, you can utilize this opportunity to have financial literacy conversations, um, check and promote your financial situ situations and skills. How's the economy in your city? What are the rises and falls in, in your city, in your area? Um, what are the opportunities in your city, in your area? Area. If you consider yourself um, illiterate in terms of finances, then you are not alone. And that is, that is the key to this whole conversation. Not everybody is a financial professional, but 
because we have people like James, we have the professional um, that are our advocates that can assist us. Um, it does not matter if you have just started earning or have been earning for a long time. Every day is a chance to reflect upon your spending and improve your finances. So, James, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, sure. So, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is James Riley. I I'm the co-CEO of Riley Enterprises, LLC. So, um, you know, we're uh, based out of Austin, Texas, which is the capital of Texas here. Um, you know, we, we have a phenomenal team. Uh, we do business uh, in nine different states, including Guam. OK. Um, and we also do business in Egypt and North Africa and also Romania and Eastern Europe. So we've been blessed to, you know, not only uh, do business here in Texas, but stretch uh, across those those uh, those state borders there. Um, so, you yeah, know, we, we've been blessed to be in business. Um, May 19th of this year will be 12 years in business. Um, and it's been um, a wonderful uh, just, you know, journey for for me and my wife and uh, for our team as well. Um, and we're just thankful that we're able to serve. Uh, and bless others with, you know, the financial knowledge and also to the, the, the information that people need when it comes to the word, you know, finances and, and knowing what to do, uh, what not to do, of course, um, and, and really finding the, the key information, the right information uh, to move forward to accomplish their goals. Because a lot of people don't uh, understand and, and not told uh, what to do in any type of climate, no matter if it's a bad economy, good economy, uh, OK economy. Uh, most people do not know. Uh, the key information on what to do. And that's why uh, we created our firm 12 years ago back in uh, 2011. And um, that's why we're still going strong today. Yes, definitely, definitely. And so why do you feel like um, it's such a taboo discussion in most households? Well, the reason why I like, you know, finance is like hush, hush, right? Like, I'll, I'll take care of mine, you take care of yours type thing, <laughs> right? Even, even uh, with married couples, right? Like, oh, no, no, well, those are your bills and these are my bills. And, you know, hey, we're, we're all going to pay it, but hey, it's going to be separate, right? No, 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 no. It, it has to be conversation, okay? The number one reason why people don't make it is finances in relationships, period, okay? So you have to make, you have to talk about it. You have to have that hard conversation, right? And it's not just, you know, hey, I'm putting all my business out like that. No, it's, it's, you're supposed to come together, right, in the household and make it work as a team. Because look, if it's more than one person in a household, it's not just you, you okay? It. Yeah. You know, it's a team. So you have to make sure, right, that you're communicating, right? And and for me and my wife, I'll use us as an example. You know, we talk about everything, right? Because it's not just mine, it's not just hers, it's ours, okay? It's our debt, for example, our money, our incomes. So that's how you have to look at it. Um, and don't be scared or, or feel like uh, ashamed, right, of your financial status, you know, because Years ago, when me and my wife started our business, we were in massive amount of debt, student loans, regular loans, credit card debt. OK. All right. And we had to have that tough decision. Right. Which really helped us because we knew what each other were, where we were. OK. And that's what it counts. You have to know where you are to start. If you don't know where you're at. Right. If, if you have a spouse or fiance, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, and you don't know, like, hey, well, I don't know where you're at. You don't know where I'm at. So we don't know where to start. at. OK. That's confusing right there. OK. And if you're not in, the, in one accord with each other, you're not going to know what to do. You're going to be stuck. And I don't want people to be stuck. OK. And so people have to understand, look, in order to not have that financial stress, because financial stress is the number one. I repeat, is the number one stress out there today. Financial stress. OK. And financial stress in the household and outside of the household, also in the workplace. OK. So look. You have to have those conversations because if you don't think that it will affect you at home and oh, that won't affect me outside, it, won't, it will because that's all you're going to be thinking about. So you're not going to be thinking about anything else about that. OK, so keep in mind, hey, have that tough conversation. OK, sit down. Now, you know, it could be in the morning, it could be at night, whatever. Sit down, you know, with your significant other and talk about it. Have those key discussions. OK, and not just talk about it once because it's going to be more than one <laughs> conversation. OK, it's not like one and done. Oh, we talked about that 10 years ago and that's it. No, 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 no. You're going to consistently talk about it. OK, get comfortable with it. All right. Because there's nothing to be ashamed about. It's nothing like to, you know, fear, fear, have fear about. No, don't don't be fearful of money. Learn how money works and then work together. I love it. Did y'all hear that? Get comfortable with it. This is a couch that should it's like a love seat. You gotta make that 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 sitting down and have that conversation feel just as pleasant as that love seat feels when you sit down to have that discussion. You really gotta. For me, I'm a visualization person, so I gotta be in the room of that environment. 
And so if this is my comfortable environment. I got to think of in a comfortable uh, position for me to have this discussion at. Um, but yes, just like he said, um, it's a team effort, especially when you have multifamily incomes. And that's that's um, husband and wife as well as kids. We have kids now who can make um, income in many avenues due to technology, due to Correct. the environment, due to the opportunity and innovators that are creating so many opportunities for our youth, programs that create uh, revenue building avenues for our youth. You know, uh, 30, 40 decades ago, kids weren't finishing school to go help their family in farms or whatever industries, grocery stores or whatever other industries that we were in. And and that goes back to that whole, we had this discussion before about having the village. You know, it does take the village and it, and it took those communities to um, cultivate the community. And that means that dollar was going around in that community. Those cho- children were getting experiences in that community. They were getting life skills in that community. That son for that lumber jack was selling the wood to their neighbor. Um, belling the hay for you know the farmer down the down the way like they learn life skills right now we have to learn to teach our kids that too and so it's not just mom and dad's income I talk to my kids about what are y'all what are y'all bringing to the table you know what can you produce what can you create not that they have to be out there working because you know there are child labor laws (laughs) but as long as they're in your household (laughs) then um, there's so many comfortable positions where you can all be employed as a family to grow your household. And I definitely tell my kids this too, because if y'all want to do extra stuff as a family, like trips, vacations, uh, going to the pizza parlor, like that's something that we all got to put forth effort to do. So what are we going to do this week? Discipline wise, we're not going to go get cookies. We're not going to go do something, you know, we're going to put our money where we want to invest our money in. And we're going to be disciplined throughout this week and only eat at home and everybody's going to cook. So on Friday, we can go to the pizza parlor. You know, we're going to make those smart choices throughout the week. We're not going to spend our lunch money at the lunch at at the cafeteria. We're going to go on Friday, you know, as a family and go out to eat. So those disciplinary things that you can do to make good practices to not spend your money every day of the week, because most lunches cost $10 a day. An, An ideal lunch is about $10, if not more. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, you got to make those practical practices. And then this website also says financial literacy, financial literacy month is not, a, I mean, it's not just a celebration, but it's a challenge. Like, like um, James said, you know, it's a challenging discussion and it's a challenging thing for people to achieve. That's why we have so many homeless people. That's how, how much, why we have so much um, disadvantaged issue situations and people right. in the world because they didn't, they didn't make the conversation comfortable. They didn't make the environment comfortable. They didn't make the discussion comfortable. Correct. One, you got to come in the room, like he said, what, do, what does each person have? What are they bringing? Even if you're not bringing anything, you know, because cause I've had many situations. I don't care where we start, how you start. It's about, you know, where we're going. And so we can meet each other half, halfway, you know, come naked when you're having these these discussions with partners and with, um, you know, with, with your married couples or whatever, um, in any relationship, business partner, uh, marriage, everything, you got to have that discussion of, you know, what, what is everybody standing? So um, talk about business. Like how does that come into business and and having that financial discussion? Because if you're not comfortable having a financial discussion personally, business wise, Uh, how are you going to make it with the financial discussion? Correct. Because, because think about it, right? I mean, when, when you think about like, uh, you know, uh, a couple, right. And, and you guys can't talk about the personal side, then the business side is going to be non-existent. You're going to, it's going to be crickets. Right. And then, one knows what's going on. One doesn't know what's going on. Right. You should never have that in your house. You should. Ne- it should never be that. Way, right. It, it, it can't. It can't function properly if it's like that. Both need to know what's going on. OK. So not only do you have to know, because here's the thing. Key, key situation right here. If something happens right to the one who knows everything, what's going to happen to the person who doesn't know? Everything? What's going to happen? You, you, you're going to be they're going to be stuck. They don't know. They don't know what papers to look through. They don't know the passwords. It is. They don't know this. They don't know. It's going to be chaos. OK, so unless you want to like live in chaos or have the potential to, I, I suggest 
that you both get on the same page when it comes to finances, personal and business. Okay, for those who have a business, okay, and for those who are in relationship, personal and business. You need to talk about both because they're gonna look separate. They're gonna look different. So you gotta talk about both. If you want to look, if you want to have a stress-free household when it comes to finances, that's what you have to talk about. Okay, and if you like, well, I don't know where to start. Just start. That's the key. You have to start. It's not about like, oh, we're going to start once we get to this level. No, 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 no. You need to start at whatever levels that you're starting at. That's where you have to start. And then as you progress, then you talk about it more. Uh, too many times do I do I see where people say, oh, now I'm just going to wait until we get to a certain level. I ain't going to talk about it right now. I was like, what does that even mean? Wait, what level? They're like, no, it's not what it, no, you don't, you don't do that. You don't start relationships at certain levels. No. You know what I'm saying? That's not how it works. You, you you grow together. You build together. You learn together. And with finances, it's all about learning. And then once you learn it, then you execute that plan. That's how you go about it. So that's that's how I would explain it. And that's how I, I look at it uh, from a, a personal view. Um, and honestly, uh, as far as the world statistics, that's how it needs to be looked at. Because if you do the opposite, you're setting yourself up for massive failure. And I do mean massive failure if you do it the opposite way. So I just I just wanted to chime in and listen to you all. And I mean, some of the assumption is that we're not having these conversations, that we could do a better job of having the conversations. I've always said that it goes well beyond communication. We're seeking an understanding because we could communicate all day and be saying totally different things. Right. Hearing totally different things. So you need an understanding. I think there's also something to be said about those who may be doing the financial work to improve their finances, but still need to, you know, to really be able to own new information, different information. When we talk about the month being a challenge, it's what can we do differently? So we got that we need to talk. Of course, we need to do that. But beyond the talking and into the, the implementation and the execution, I would love to hear you just your feedback, James, on what are some of the things that people who are positioning themselves to plan for legacy, uh, to do these things that were like just first steps? What are those first steps? Oh, well, first, first one on one, you got to learn where the budget is. And I don't mean, you know, just like, oh, I put some numbers down. This is what I make. This is what comes out. You got it's, it's more than just the basics. People have to, yes, learn the basics, but you got to move from that. Go to the advanced level. OK, learn what the 50, 30, 20 budgeting strategy is. Learn what the 70, 30 rule is. Know what the 80, 20 rule is. OK, learn, find the books, ask the right people. OK, it, it, you have to know every single cent. OK, I mean, not just because I, I you know, I, I co-own the financial firm. Right. Because numbers matter. OK, I don't care if it's a I don't care if it's a penny or it could be a million dollars. It matters. OK, so you have to make sure that, hey, got to start with that budget. Both you got to sit down, okay, do some calculations, okay, and know what's coming in, what's coming out, what you could potentially make, okay, because you also have to do financial forecasting. Sure. Know like, oh, hey, you're about to be in that raise, right? Oh, what's that raise going to be? Oh, you know what? I'm going to go from $50,000. Uh, the raise is going to take me to $60,000. Okay, so look at that. After taxes, because you should pretend gross doesn't exist. Just worry about your net pay, what you what you take home. That's what you, that's what you budget. Don't budget your gross. You should never budget your gross. OK, budget your net, what you take, what you're bringing home. So once you know that, OK, hey, yeah, we didn't get that raise. OK, we're going to be making another thousand dollars a month. OK, once we you know, the, the, as far as the net income, put that in the budget, too, because you're going to know like, OK, hey, once we hit this, oh, we can afford this now. That's how a budget works, because I know I can afford this right now. But six months from now, I'll be able to afford this. That's what budgeting helps you. OK, people think of budgeting as like restrictive. Right. They like, ah, oh, I don't want to be on no budget. I spend whatever. For, stop that mentality. For, lose that mentality. All right. Budgets don't restrict you. Budgets help you set up for the next move. Okay? And, and that's the assumption that, again, you there is some there is a future that you actually want for yourself. You know, exactly. so so the, the, the interweaving and the interrelation of, of literacy, just basic literacy. You got to want something. You have to want mm -hmm. to position yourself and your family, your children. You have to want that. Nobody can make you want that. But once you do, 
Correct. have to have an idea of what those goals look like, right? Can I not buy pizza? Like Ashley said, can we not buy pizza and cookies so that we can eat steak and lobster for the whole summer while we're at Martha's yeah. Vineyard, you know, in two years? You know, you having go. the projecting. And, 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 and I don't want to get into the battle of the sexes here, but when you think about um, in relationships, in business, uh, wherever, the way we look at things, you know, proactive versus reactive, sometimes it, it hurts us, which is why we need an understanding. So I love that you said a budget is not restrictive. It's not designed to be restrictive in this way. If you are, in fact, planning for your future, oh, yeah, no, your no, present no, future. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right, it's no. a budget. It's just to help you keep to stay on it, track. It helps you to stay on track, but also it, it helps you lead to where you want to go. All right? right. And, and you know, everybody has a budget. Right. Me and my wife have budgets you know i mean as your but as you grow your income grows of course your budget just get bigger okay you know i mean me and my wife we you know we have multi-millionaire clients they have budgets right okay? it's not like it's not like you know you just spend what because if you spend everything or if you're not controlled your spending guess what will happen you will no longer be in that financial status that you once were right. okay and i've seen that as well right people people not understanding like oh well I, I have all this money and you just spend, 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 spend. Well, hey, look, if you spend more than what you're bringing in, guess what's going to happen to anybody? I don't care what where you land on the, the tax bracket. OK, you're not going to end up with, you know, so people have to understand everybody runs on that. Right now, people may say, well, oh, yeah, well, the government has a budget, but they always, you know, they spend. Yeah. Key word. Yeah. That's why the country is in so much dread. That's why we're so much debt. Because they make budgets and they go over the budget. You don't do that. You don't do that. Okay. I mean, one, I always make a joke. Well, they print money so they can, you know, whatever. You you can't print it. So therefore you can't, no, no, don't do that. Don't repeat the bad habits that you see from others. Okay. Don't repeat that. Okay. Do the opposite. Learn a budget, make a budget, adhere to that budget. That means, hey, you made the budget, you be accountable. You be accountable. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. You be accountable. OK. And once you show that accountability, it will play in your favor. And once you have that favor. Oh, man. Look, all it is now. You just look, you know where you're going now. Yeah, for cool. sure. It, it makes for it sure. so much easier. But so many people are afraid or then they think that it's like, oh, budget's bad. Oh, it's bad. You know, no, 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 no. Keep in mind, every financial institution doesn't matter if it's mine, a bank, credit union, whoever, investment firm. Whatever. We all have budgets. OK. All have budgets. Uh, you know, it's not like we're just, oh, this mo this this uh, money here, well, I'm just going to put it here. This money over here, I'm just going to throw it over here. It's not how it works. It's not yeah. how it works. Well, it's mindset. And we and, and I'm, I'm grateful to be able to talk about that, you know, with Miss Positivity, specifically for the intents and purposes of so you think you want to be that. It really mm -hmm. is mindset. I know it's cliche and it's trendy. But the reality of it is, is you don't know what you don't know until you know it. So mm -hmm. when we when we're thinking about you know, OK, you got to want this and you got to be dedicated. Don't be ashamed. It really does move us back to the conversation of what do you want? Yeah, no, mentality. You have to answer it's, it's, it's that, mentality. you know, it's mentality. It, it starts cool. with mentality. It, it, it can only start with mentality. Uh, I, yeah, it, it, you could be it's like this. All right. If you have a certain mentality, no matter if you win the lottery, say you win the mega millions. Right. Oh, now you're rich. Yeah. If you still have the same mentality. It don't matter. It does not matter. It's it gone. Matter. Yeah, for sure. It, it, you know, so or it grew. So it, it's yeah, it, de it depends on where you are. And that, those are the more practical conversations when we when we're thinking about our communities. I know Ash was just saying, you know, 18 and gone. That's cultural. There there are, you know, systemic reasons why we do a lot of that. And and, and also why our children sometimes are are not informed. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not just our children. It's our elders. <laughs> uh some of our elders out here like wait where are your money going what you doing you know right well well and that's because you know in 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 the in our community right um it, it's of course very known that we didn't have the time or take the time to to learn some of these things yeah and uh, you know other other communities that they they called on to it right they called yeah. on to it quick and they it was like oh that's how it works oh okay cool okay. yeah you know and, and one thing, one thing uh, uh, 12 years ago that someone taught me, they were like, learn how to build with peer profit. I was like, what does that even mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, 
Is that like a trick question? What is that? What? Pure profit? I know yeah. what profit is, but what does pure profit mean? Right. right. So, you know, I was like, oh, okay. And they were like, yeah, learn how to build your business like that. And, and don't worry about, don't get in too much debt. Don't, don't do that. And you'll be like fine. The, they, the, the gentleman told me, he said, the rest of the world will try to manage debt. You go out and learn how to manage money and you mm -hmm. go make that profit. If you're, you know, I was like, okay, okay. It, it, it made sense. I didn't understand it fully, but it made sense years ago. And that actually helped us to get out of the debt that we were in when we first started in business. Okay. Yeah. Because most people, I mean, people who know our story know this, but, you know, we were in heavy six figures of debt. Okay. So heavy six figures. All right. So that, you know, for me, um, I tell people all the time, look, you got to be willing and take the time to learn. I, I don't worry about, oh, well, my parents didn't learn it. My parents didn't teach me. It. That's okay. Go learn it yourself. Okay. And then once you learn it, go teach it to your children. All right. Absolutely. Or you could be, you could be a nice neighbor. Okay. <laughs> or you teach somebody else. Okay. So let's, do, let's, sure. let's, let's not, you know, un let's understand that knowledge is the reason why, they, you know, the old saying knowledge is power. There's a reason for that. Okay. But what most of us don't do, we don't seek out the knowledge. And then if you don't seek it out, the person who has it, we still have it. Okay. I still have it. If a person comes to me, sure, they're going to know it. If they don't, well, I, there's nothing I can do. I can't read minds. So you have to make sure that you have the mentality of wanting to learn, wanting to get the information. Okay. As much as you need that ice cream, as much as you need that pizza, right? Because it's wants, but most people try to make it seem like it's a need. Like, oh, I need it. Okay. You know, as much as you need that, that nice fancy car, let me tell you, it, 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 look, you want to want to get the right information when it comes to your money, to come to finances. That's going to lead you to a better life. People have to understand if you want to, if you want to leave the whole paycheck to paycheck lifestyle, exactly what I was going to say. you have to learn a different mentality. Okay. Okay, the man, the mentality that I had when I used to be an employee, making paycheck, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, you know, when we and my wife first got married, look, it, it, you got to go away from that. You got to, you got to, you got to lose that mentality. You got to learn a different mentality because now that I'm a business owner and I have employees, it's a whole different. I don't think the same. I haven't thought the same in many, many, many years. So not to say that if you want to be like myself, but if you want to have better, you have to think better, and you have to think differently than what you're thinking right now. And do better. So we need so we need desire. We need a sure. desire to improve our personal economy. We need the motivation and the mindset mm -hmm. and we need a budget. Yeah, look, it, it it's you know, those things. Right. Of course, are the essential tools to start. Right. And then, okay. of course, you learn things in the future. But you have to have that. You have to have that. OK. And people fight against it because they think that it's going to do them harm. But in reality, in reality, because that's in their mind, in reality, it's going to do them so much a, a great service if they if they do those things right there. For okay? sure. And For sure. and I get it. You know, hey, man, you know, it's hard, man. You know, I worked uh, eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, blah, blah, blah. All right. Well, look, you only get one life. How do you want to live? I mean, I, I you know, I mean, do you want to do you want to live What's a life? What's emoji called? The you know, I don't know emoji. <laughs> you know, do you want to do you want to live the life of uh, mediocrity or do you want to live a life of greatness? And and it's two different. That believe me, I I've, I know what mediocrity is because I used to be there. Okay, I used to be there. All right, and yeah, I know what sure. greatness feels like because I'm at that level. For so sure. you know, it, it's 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 way different. Different people, different circle, different association. I mean, hey, you know, uh, if you want to be a part of that, then you gotta you gotta start thinking differently. And then, you know, it sh and it should get you excited because it got me excited 12 years ago. OK, because I was yeah. like, look, I don't have to work paycheck to paycheck. I don't have to make this little measly salary that they want to give me. I don't have to uh, worry about my bills are going to be paid or not. OK. Oh, the first time I get scared. Oh, it's the first again. Uh, you know, no, 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 no. If you want to change that, if you want to change that. All right. Then you're going to have to think different. And then once you do that, then you learn the information that you need to go, that you need to do. I'm sorry. And, and once you do that. Then you learn how to move your money. You learn how to what to do with your money, and then your money works for you. And then guess what? You don't worry about it anymore. Right? Okay, so so then what I'm hearing, and and I don't know, Miss Positivity, you tell me if that's what you're hearing. I'm hearing if you have all those things, you have the desire, you want to improve, you 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 are finding yourself more and more accountable. You got the motivation, the mindset, you got a budget. 
Are we ready to talk to Riley Enterprises with all the with all those things, or do we need to do something else? So, okay. yeah, I mean, I'm hearing that, but I, I think we're missing the whole. Um, what was I gonna say? Like, we're still we're still missing the whole. Um, like, I deserve to treat myself type of type of yeah. situation, or the I don't have enough information, or the information that I have has been wrong. So then I would say, yes, you want to talk to the professionals that are actually producing results. Mm -hmm. Yes. Correct. If you're still got the naysayers or the information like, like Tiffany, I, like I love her that she's bold enough to kick out all the debris that doesn't work for her. She's taught me that so many yeah. times. Yeah. You know, if it doesn't work for you, kick Stop. that out. Get rid but, of it. Get rid of it because then it's a waste of your time and your effort. Um, for you, but that's different for everyone because something that Absolutely. works for for me may not work for Tiffany, but it'll work for James. You exactly. Know? The different thing you can't say that it failed because it didn't work for you. It just wasn't in your area. So um, I also think you got to weed out the um, the information, weed out the 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 professionalism that you are sustaining or gaining or whatever, but. Um, yeah, I, I also think in any any faucet, it, it's good to have conversation with people like James. Like, right. once you have everything that, that Tiffany and James were just talking about, you still need to have that conversation with James. Right. Even if it's not a long-term conversation with James, it's like, hey, I finally got myself in position to be disciplined with the budget, operate my budget, where do I go next? Then once he gets you in the right lane, maybe that practice will traject, give you the trajectory for the rest of, you know, whatever. Or you can have a long-term relationship with James like I do, where I consistently consult with him. I utilize his services to support me. I ask for help when I need help. I ask for expertise when I need expertise. I ask for growth, um, growth um, um, plans to help, you know, with what I have. Before I spend it, I don't want to spend it wrong. Like, what do I do? You know, which way should I go? Would this be a good investment? Um, that's not necessarily hiring someone. It's getting that professional help before you make the move. That's where that's where I would say yes. Go go straight to James and have that consultation and see where you're going to go next. Because everybody makes something like even if your paycheck this month was two hundred dollars, James, what could I do with my two hundred dollars to get me to five hundred dollars next month? Because when I started seeing when I started seeing my paychecks chasing me like i forget that i got paid today like who i didn't know what that looked like you know like yeah. i already had enough money that i'm not looking for the paycheck so my personal finances have been great because i don't even look for i'm not waiting for the payment to come in it's it just comes in and i'm like oh wait you know that's a good feeling i had to process the feeling that i had with my paycheck sneaking up on me those are the kind of um, experiences you want to have to get you to the next level. And some people don't want to be rich. I, I hear that all the time. People say, I don't want to be rich. Nobody uh, nobody wants to be rich, but they want to be, com they want to be right, comfortable and they want to right, live a good life. And right. everybody wants to say, you can't tell me you ain't trying to get the, the, the rich position. Exactly. But you are trying to be in a healthy position right. financially. Right. You do not want to have that feeling where you're looking at your bank account and it's saying zero and you're waiting for it to say your paycheck. Or if it was saying negative like me. Or negative. Like years yeah. ago. So, so I don't like negatives either. Look, look, it, it, so, it gets, yeah. It, 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 look, my, my thing is, is that, look, it, it you know, yes, yeah, no one, you know, not everybody wants to be a billionaire. I get that, of course. And, and everyone wants to be, be a millionaire. Uh, you know, I, 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 I would beg a difference. It's great on this side. Okay. It, it's, it's great. on. Uh, uh, but, you know, even, look, even the, you know, even the professionals, even reports, you know, now it's like, oh, if you make $200,000, that's the ideal income for Americans now, adult Americans. So I'm like, well, uh, you know, pretty sure if everybody was making 200 grand, that'd be great, right? I mean, sure, 200 grand a year, you're good. You ain't got to worry, you ain't got to worry in the world, okay? Because if you're like me, I'm like, hmm, if I make 200 grand, I'm going to spend half that, save at least three quarters of it. The other quarter is going to be the other quarter of that's going to be for travel. That's how I think. OK. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you know, I, I, you always break it up. You always you always have a plan. Yeah. Right. So, again, that's what budgeting gets you, because if you know, like, hey, I'm going to hit this. Hey, I can foresee like this is what I'm going to do with it. OK. And that's why it's so important. That's why it's so important, because you have to change the mentality. Most people 
they get a pay raise, right? They think about what, how fast I can spend it. What I'm gonna spend it, on, right? And and look, of course, everybody, you know, you get look, you gotta spend money on watches, you gotta spend money on clothes, you gotta spend money on phones, you gotta spend money on, you know, whatever. A lot of different things, right? Food, whatever. But instead of continuing just thinking about money in that way, right? Be all the, the good old consumer, you know. This is, look, learn how money can actually do something else for you. Okay, you got you got to learn that. You have to learn that. Now, yeah, money, it's personal I, economy. Yeah, I mean it's personal I mean, economy. I mean, yeah, people know how to 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 use it, right? As far as spending it, but you learn how to use it in other ways. Learn how to to for it to to work for you. Okay, I, of course, years for years now, I've been uh, I talk about that a lot because once I understood it, and once I understood like, oh, this is this is powerful. Okay, so this dollar can make me two dollars. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm I'm all for that. Yeah. I'm all for that. And if you don't understand, he's saying you might want to invest it. You mm -hmm. might want to build something, like produce something. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm an we're authors, so we produce a book that should produce, um, you know, additional revenue or get that money back. And so now it becomes a product base that we um, gain money from. Um, you know, pouring into somebody else. Nonprofits are a great way to get tax breaks. There's so many, you know, different ways to get those money yeah. back. And, and, and even at the end of the year, right? Right? When you get them uh what the income tax checks, right? Hey, instead of spending them on frivolous things like electronics, right? I mean, hey, look, I know we all want to stay up to date, right? Wanna be, you know, keep up with the Joneses. But look, hey, if you're in debt, that's where that extra money should be going to. Until yeah. you get to the point where you don't have to deal with it anymore. Yeah. That's what you should be doing with the extra money that you're getting. See, think of it like this. Um, you know. Do you want to live like you're great? Keyword was like you're great now, okay? Or live, like I said, to be great later. And later doesn't mean 50 years from now because it doesn't doesn't take that long. We're we're it's 2023, okay? This isn't this isn't 1939, okay? Like look, you ain't gotta work for 30 years, you ain't work for 30 years 35 years for a company and retire on one third of what you were making, okay? You know, like let's lose that mentality, lose it, lose it. If you want to work, great, go ahead. Okay, we have employees. They they love it. They you know great. I understand that. Got it. But if you want to have more, okay, and even if you're an employee, if you're like, look, cool, I, I make fifty grand a year, but look, I, I would like to hit six figures one time in my life or one day in my life. Learn. The yeah. best thing you can do is learn. Okay, learn it. Be a great student, and then once you're a great student and you have that information, you soak it up, then you use it, and then before you know it, you're gonna be an expert. That's what you should be doing. Okay. Everybody who has personal finances or business finances, look, you should you guys should be the experts on what's going on. Okay. That's how you should think. You want to be an expert. You don't want to just be a person like, oh yeah, I'm just I'm just mediocre at this. I'm just I'm just paying bills, man. Look, every first of the month, I pay my rent, pay my mortgage, I pay my car no, I pay it. No, man, that that's that that gets old real quick. And that's why so many Americans, so many adult Americans. OK, or I think it was 64 million. The last report that came out from the Fed and the, uh, the SEC, 64 million Americans. Man. It, it's it's paycheck to paycheck. Okay? I mean, but that that goes back to, again, it's you, you have to want it. And some of us, again, the information wasn't available. The environment, there are all types of variables. Um, so it's, it's, it really is broader than a conversation. I think those of us who are experts or those are who are aspiring ex experts mm -hmm. can just be the example. Cause sometimes people don't know that they want something until they see it. Until they and, see it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And so this is going the back to, right. It literally, it's, it's literacy. It's, you see, it's always going to come mm -hmm. back to literacy for me because I see it play out so often. And then the language that we're using can be intimidating. So you start having those, that, that shame and the grief conversation, but going back to your original conversation, the, the comment about 200,000, I just read this article. Um, it was a blog post that said, you know, the millionaire is the new, you know, middle class now. And mm -hmm. we saw this with the, you know, the advent of the new money, if you will. It's where millennials came in and just swept it all up. Social media, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Through courses and digital products. Uh -huh. uh, and we saw it and we just kept getting bigger and bigger. But, but where we are right now is you know, asking us to be a lot more intentional, a lot more accountable. And this ties into this conversation about wanting something 
for yourself, for the people you love, beyond. You drop right. dead tomorrow. Okay, so you know what? At least I know these things are in place. Right. I had this mindset. I, I grew it to expertise. I shared this, this with others. And we're secure to a degree because there it, there's always going to be uncertainty. Like you could you could be filthy rich and it tank tomorrow, and you're like, okay, now what? But you did your due diligence to put yourself in a place where you're not concerned and worried about that. And I just think for the most part, you know, when you look at uh, studies, one of my one of my favorite, the Ruby Payne study that talks about you know uh, those who are impoverished versus middle class versus the wealthy and the mindset, just the mm -hmm. psychology behind it all. Uh, mm -hmm. Renting, you know, versus owning. I mean, just, it's a big conversation. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I just wanted to get granular where I just kept bringing it back. Like, okay, so do they talk to James now? Because the, the other part of that is you talking to James, time is money, right? Yeah. You, you still have to come to the table with enough to deeply want to change your situation, to challenge yourself and those that you're in community with to improve. And that that requires you figure that out way before you get to James. But once you get to James, you're look, serious about it and you have the capacity to see it through. No, look, I, I tell people all the time, that, and that comes with a plan. You gotta have a, you gotta have a plan. Absolutely. So it's like, if, you know, uh, you can't do anything if you just walk or do things aimlessly on in the earth, you can't. You, you know, if you walk around here aimlessly, if you just I mean, you can. Your... I mean, yeah, but right. how does that work out for you? <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I mean, how like, profitable will it be right. for your life? So, yeah. re really, really, really think about um, everything that James has said today, and really um, identify if this is what if this if this is even a desire for you, or maybe right. just listening to us today, did it become a desire for you? Exactly. Are you are you sick and tired of being sick and tired, or are you only getting to a certain um, uh, position, you know, like some of our hair, like it grows only to a certain length and you're like, wait a minute, can it get to the next right, right, right. phase of this growth? Right. <clears throat> um, so what phase of growth are you trying to reach now? Because you may have already reached a phase of your growth and you just need help to, get, to go a little bit further. See? You know, it might not be you're at rock bottom. Right. You might have you have, might have made you a, a nice little pool, but you don't know where to go from there. This conversation is for every level because, right. of course, we're always talking about the starter the starter packet because um, many think that they don't have a forward march in this thing, but they do. Mm -hmm. But then there's those people who figured it out and they've built some kind of a, a pool or a wealth or a generational wealth or some kind of legacy, but they don't know how to expand that that legacy and, and it's right. still important to have those conversation with 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 james and in and, and, and industries like um james um or like i've said in the beginning i've always worked in the industries that i've wanted to um um either build as an entrepreneur because i am an entrepreneur so either work in mm -hmm. or um invest in and so before i started a daycare i worked at a daycare mm -hmm. and um and then i was successful at doing that and then same thing you know going into the bookstores industry meeting a lot of authors, um, you know, getting attached to a financial advisor um, because I don't just want to make money because I can make money all day. I can do yeah. that. Yeah. I can show up and make money. But what do I do with my money to make it grow? And how do I keep expanding that and stop having the same conversation in business? You know, and oh, speaking of, I, I, I noticed, sorry, but I, no, I do want to, when you talk about the bookstore, I yes. was going to bring it up, but I'm like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Don't we have some books to share? Yes. So I did bring a couple books for y'all to look into. And I think I figured out how to show them on our mm. board screen. Yeah. The Money Code and How to Crack It. This is one of our um, U.S. Army veterans, Nicole Redman. Um, she is one of the co-authors in this book, but The Money Code and How to Crack It. And this is, I picked this one because it's, it falls right in line with So You Think You Want to Be That because they talk about their struggles with finances and they tell the truth about those situations that happen. So these are real experiences, good and bad, um, but for the growth of the of the reader, because um, they all made they all made money practices that either you know halted them or stalled them or gave them great losses or profited them in many different ways. And so 
This is all about the mindset of money, like, like James was talking about. But these are real life experiences that can show you, I did this. This is how it happened to me. So if it's happened to you, you ain't the only one. You're not the first one. And now um, Nicole is like um, running, running many, many businesses. She has a financial hub. She has a um, investing company and she has an Airbnb uh, company and she's doing amazing, you know. Mm-hmm. And so um, think about everybody has that story, you know, where you started and where you want to go. And she started in many different lanes. And now she has these lanes um, starting with money. Her mindset was money. Um, and so just think about that. And then I have, let me see. Okay, there it is. Wait. Okay, wait. I can just do this, guys, because I don't want to keep messing up your, oop. I don't want to keep messing up your eyes, but I can do this. All right. So. There it is. So this one is reach your money goals in three different steps. And I like this one because it's cute. So these are three (laughs) different personalities. So for women, of course, but, you know, men can benefit from this. I told her to make a male one, but um, it's three divas because it's three different uh, personalities of spenders. One's one's like holding on to it for dear life. She's got in her mattress and everything. She's not giving it to the (laughs) banks. She don't trust nobody with her money, but she Mm -hmm. make her money. The other one is like, ooh, I, I see that Louis Vuitton. I, I'm on the list every week. I'm mm-hmm. spending. And then the other one is, is just barely has no relationship with it, but um, they would like to have a relationship with it. So it's three different personalities, yeah. so pretty much like three different upbringings, but um, different ways that you spend. And in every one of these, after I, I did this book, it's a workbook. And every one of these, I had characteristics for each one of these personalities. And, um, and it taught me to hone into one way as a spender and as a money, money, money relationship. This one's all about relationship with your money. So my money and me are in a partnership together. Now, every time I get, like he said, a penny, me and that penny are now in a partnership. And then this is what, you know, the plan, the budget of what we're going to do together. And so I like that book as well. So um, reach your money goes in three steps by Brandy Baxter or the the money code and how to crack it um, by Nicole Redman and a, and a bunch of other co-authors. But you can get them all at Word Unite Bookstore, www.wordunitebookstore.com. Mm-hmm. And um, just please reach out to us. The, there's so many books definitely out there that oh, can yeah. help you with financial literacy. But yes. be intentional yes. with the month of April for, I would say, growing something, not, not dwelling on on your past suckiness and finances dwelling on where you can go. I hope this encourages you on where you can go. And if, and if you've gotten so far, how far, how much further you can go. That's what Correct. I would say. Correct. And, and sure. definitely there, there a lot of information out there, um, you know, uh, books and, you know, uh, Rylan Enterprise, we have, we have a book list as well. Um, I think it's a total of uh, 19 books, um, you know, and nice. you know, so, so a lot of those books changed my life that I read, you know, and, and it was a part, you know, mentality and, and you know fi- financial books as well, but it, it changed my mindset, which in turn changed my life because how I used to think when I didn't have money, okay, when I used to have the the, the what we call the broke mentality, okay, and, and broke don't mean like you have zero. You can right. actually have money and still be have the broke mentality, okay. It's 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 literally okay thinking that you can't make it, no matter you can't make it no matter what, no matter what you do. Huh? I won't make it. No, that's not that lifestyle's not meant for me. Okay, that that's the other type of mindset too that comes with it. Oh, that's how that. Oh, no, 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 that's for the other people. That's not for me. No, no, you gotta you gotta change that. You gotta lose that. All right, because it is meant for you. You just have to work towards. It. Yeah, for sure. And it, and it helps when we're, we're again when we're in community and doing this. You know, sometimes you know if you know somebody who does it, you don't want to reach out to them because they're a little too close. So this is yet another opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. Reach out to Ashley at Words Unite Bookstore, purchase a book from your local mobile bookseller, you know, have a conversation with James, schedule. Um, let's see here. I'm going to hide this and I'm going to show this again because we're going to wrap up. I just wanted to get our final comments, but the website is there. Go on the website, take a look around, you know, schedule a call. It's not going to, it's not going to hurt. You can only help, you know. Um, just to talk to somebody and to just be super transparent about where you are and where you want to be. I'm almost positive 
it's just information, you know, once you call. It's just information that you can either use or say, okay, well, I'll come back to that. Right. But information is always going to be, you know, valuable when you, again, want it and you seek it out. So I thoroughly enjoy this conversation. Me thoroughly. too. Man, we, thoroughly. Almost, we almost on here for an hour because that is a serious conversation. It, it's it a is. serious conversation and, and it's a conversation that needs to be had. And it's a conversation that you should want to have if you want to change where you're at. Because yeah. You, it, it, no matter who you're talking to, no matter if it's a spouse or financial advisor like myself, or one of my uh, financial advisors that works for us, you're gonna have that conversation, <laughs> okay? You for know, sure. all right. So just like, just like you know, if you go to a doctor and you gotta tell them all your medical history, hey, it goes the same way, okay? But look at this: if you build your money up, hey, you're gonna have a better health, man, because you know, so you be for better health care. That's for sure. That's yeah, for, for sure. For know? sure. Okay. Because uh, believe me, I didn't understand that until I, I re we reached certain levels, and I was like, oh. I can actually get that. Okay. I didn't even know that existed. And they don't tell you that either. So believe me, it's worth it. Okay. Believe in yourselves. Yeah. Okay. All right. Believe that you can do it. Believe that you can uh, achieve the above. Okay. That you can be above level. Okay. And you can be at those levels that people may think that you can't. Okay. And if you think that you can't yourself, I'm telling you right now. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you right now that you can yeah. And you, you, you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, I can, I will, and I am going to get there. Okay. No matter oh, what, you are going to get there. For Believe sure. in yourself. For you, sure. Don't doubt anything. Okay. It's all possible. You just need to have the information. Like I said, become a good student. Once you are a good student, go out there and become that expert. I mean, it just makes sense that you're sitting next to Mrs. Positivity because you over there. Pretty much Mr. Positivity. I just, I love it. Yeah, for sure. But, but it's so, it's so relevant. And I really do hope that, you know, our audience has some value from this conversation because it's opening the door for the next. And we are just better stewards of our financial resources. This is how we affect real change when we can have it coming in and we can give back and we can do all those wonderful things that we want to do. But it's just being super honest with ourselves. So I've enjoyed this conversation. Miss Positivity, you got anything else we want to share? Oh, ma'am, I'm just thankful. Again, I've been saying it all this year that I am thankful that we are staying consistent. Consistency is is a, is very hard as a human nature, um, and that's what I'm thankful for each and time, each and every time we get on this channel to be consistent with having these tough conversations. And so, um, please, you know. Think about showing up for yourself. Think about showing up in your finances in the month of April. And thank y'all for continuing to tune in. To so you think you want to be that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good night. Take care. Take care. Yes.